As vehicles become increasingly more complex, ADOS calibrations are a huge opportunity for your shop. But where do you start? The most important first step is finding the right partner. When you work with Aztec, you get a true partner, dedicated to providing your business with the right tools, technology, and training you'll need to perform all dynamic and static calibrations. Aztec is the trusted calibrations partner for hundreds of businesses across the U.S. and Canada. They will build a customized roadmap for your shop to bring all calibrations in-house. Hey there, it's Jason Stahl with another episode of Under the Radar, and today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Repairify. Today we have a very special guest from Aztec Driven by Repairify. His name is Chris Bierke. He is the Director of R&D Calibrations and Implementation for Aztec Driven by Repairify. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for being here. Um, you know, I, I know I kind of sent you some questions I might ask you prior to this, but I'm going to throw maybe a little curveball at you for the first one. All right. I'm going to ask you, Chris, what is, where is, where are collision repairs falling short today with ADAS calibrations? Uh, I think the biggest thing is um, complete proper repairs and procedures. Um, th those are the big big items that we see in our side of things and that for coming from the collision industry to this in industry, I've seen that, uh, you know, sometimes we're missing a bent bracket or uh, a body tech thinks things need to be uh, flat and shiny, right? And uh, we get in a blind spot area fixing the quarter panel and, hey, we're not, we're not going to see that once the bumper's on. So uh, let's just make it again, uh, feather out that paint edge make those big dents go away, make it look like it should, and uh, send it. But the problem is, is the angles that need to be uh, paid attention to in those areas uh, to make sure that those radars, the cameras, are sitting properly so that they can properly see what they need to uh, and, and prevent collisions. Interesting. So, so is that a, uh, if I follow you, that, that, that is a procedural issue. They're, they're not following steps or the or, or the OEM manual or or is that what you're talking about there's some of that uh, I think a little bit more of it um, does fall into the you know lack of knowledge and and what these systems do how they work so maybe a, a radar got impacted or that area right above it in the quarter panel got uh, impacted and and we're just the, the old adage of you can't see both sides at the same time and, and does it look like it should uh, those are big things that <clears throat> body techs and, and older body techs, I'll say, um, just because they haven't been brought up with this, and, and this is a new thing, right? In the last five, six years, this is this is new to the industry, and, and everybody's starting to pay attention to it. So th those are the things that, <clears throat> not that not that they're purposefully doing something wrong. It's just that we're not doing it 100% the way that vehicle was was. Uh, uh, engineered, right? I mean, think back to some procedures that, you know, maybe 10 years ago when I was really heavy into the industry, um, we're, we're counting spot welds when we're putting on a quarter panel and, and we've got to put the same there, or maybe it's 10% more and right off of the spot weld, right? Those types of things and, and the engineering of these vehicles, following those procedures and making things are back to pre-accident condition are so hugely important when it comes to ADOS. You know, Chris, you mentioned knowledge, and, and you're right. You know, ADOS is, is still new, right? It's, it's, you said five, really? six years or whatever. Body shops have been around for 100 plus years, right? And so five years isn't much time. So knowledge, where, where do you feel the industry is today with its knowledge of these systems, uh, not only the systems themselves, the vehicles that they are um, in, but the, the processes and procedures to restore those systems to functionality after a, a collision? I want to say we're getting better. Um, looking at, you know, five, six, maybe even seven years ago, um, we're definitely better than them. <clears throat> but identification, I think, is the huge portion of it. And then go back to the whys, right? Why is this system there and what does that system do? Um, the 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 function of them, I think, for any anybody in the body industry, 
has a has a driver's knowledge of of what those systems do but they don't have the deep knowledge of how that's working what it's looking for um, where it's where it's looking and and what effects the collision repair does to that system so i think there's a huge gap still um, and, and even in identification um, we used to do a, a two and a half hour class just to identify what is on that vehicle whether it's a front radar behind a, a radar or an emblem um, maybe it's a camera in the bottom of the mirror those things they've made them aesthetically pleasing now to the customer which they don't want to see a big old radar sitting on the bottom of the bumper they want to see things hidden the way they should look and and because of the hiding of things there's there's other indicators that you can look at maybe some buttons on the steering wheel that will tell you what those systems have but you know, when you sent over those questions, that was one of the first questions. What's what's the biggest um, opportunity with ADOS or something along those lines? Um, and, and it's multifold, really. It's one, that identification. Uh, two, what does that system do? And having the technicians that know those systems, know how to work with those systems, and know how to calibrate those systems. And then you get into the actual calibrations of things, right? So the body shop level, I think first it's identifying what systems need to be calibrated based on your repairs, right? You could be touching a component not even close to it, and maybe there's a manufacturer recommendation or requirement where it says, hey, because you did this, this has to be done, or this vehicle was in a collision, this needs to be done. Uh, a lot of that procedural knowledge is not there, and um, our industry is getting a lot better than it used to in using service information, all data, OE service information. But, um, you know, think back to the Toyotas with the, the left fender. If you disconnected that whole grounding strap while the battery was still connected, you just fried yourself a harness, right? Those procedures are, I mean, that, and that, that would cost you a couple thousand dollars to do, but those are the procedures now that you have to pull for everything that you're doing on the car, not just safety and suspension and, and airbag type stuff. You need to be pulling them for everything um, to make sure that you're doing the right thing and you're following that process to put that car back to a, a ready to crash state. Yeah, it's a good point, Chris. I, and I think shops still struggle with where to find these procedures or how to access these procedures um, and they're also befuddled by the time it takes to research these procedures and getting compensated properly for, the, for, those, for that time. So what, what, is there an easy solution out there f to help them to, to find these procedures uh, because the vehicle repair has gotten so complicated? Yeah, so you know, that is the huge portion of it. It's, it's that research time. And, and I know about that same time ago as I'm leaving the industry, we're starting to charge for that. And, starting to bring on people to do that research. Um, what Aztec uh, Repairify has done, uh, we, we came up with a platform called ADOS Think. Uh, runs and scrubs your estimate, <clears throat> and based on the repairs you are doing to that car, within three to five seconds, it goes ahead, it scrubs that estimate, uh, it'll tell you what systems need to be calibrated, it'll tell you what systems are on that vehicle, and, and give you the link to the procedure. So it, it, it helps with that research uh, hugely uh, when it comes to ADAS and safety systems. So you mentioned ADAS Think. You know, over mm -hmm. the last several years, Repairify has uh, not held its secret that they've tr been trying to become a one-stop shop for all of a body shop's calibration, scanning, di diagnostic needs. Um, where do you feel today, 2024, uh, that Repairify stands and its goal to become a one-stop shop for, for everything a shop needs? I, I think we're there. <clears throat> we're always innovating, um, doing new things to make things faster, uh, more efficient, uh, easier on the shops, uh, because we all know right now we're, we're in that area where there's not a lot of people to go around, and, and we've got people leaving the industry and not as many re re replacing them. Um, so making things more efficient, easier for the shop to run their processes. Uh, we, we try to make it so it's easy to integrate with the shop's current processes, but we also come up with things, the best practices along the way that we like to share with, with our customers. Yeah, so 
can you tell me today what is some of the latest, greatest equipment that Repairify has, the most cutting edge on the market, maybe something that was recently introduced, or is there something that, that you guys are really proud of and, and trying to uh, let the world know about today that, that, that's maybe proprietary to you or gives you an advantage in the market? So calibrations. Um, we do a lot with calibrations. I think what sets us apart from most other companies out there or doing it on your own is that the support we have behind it. Uh, we've got a lot of experience in this space. We started as uh, OE only and would only do OE calibrations with the OE equipment. We've, we've found different ways to do, uh, make it more affordable for the um, end user, but still able to say it's an OE calibration. I think the other thing that we've come out with recently is the all-in-one. Um, the all-in-one, you've got your, your ability to do your car side scans. You've got, you still have the access to that OE tool with that tra uh, OE trained technician that can help you through things, um, diagnose, give you your recommendations. And then with the car side scan, we just recently came out with Aztec Insights where it's going to, the, the millions of scans that we do um, and have done over the years have shown us what our recommendations need to be for certain groups of, um, say, DTCs. And with that, it'll take your, your scan, look through it, and give you those recommendations on where to look, what to look for, what the possible issue may be, so that you can repair that car without having to take it to the dealer. You know, and it's so, so many things are changing in this industry so quickly, um, not just with vehicle electronics, but, you know, what a car is made of uh, and constructed of. And there's th th these, these vehicles today are getting very, very sophisticated, both from a substrate level to electronics, and the OE repair recommendations are changing also. Um, what does Repairify, does Repairify offer training? Do they, do they go to shops and do in-person training? Do they do virtual training? Um, is it just on the equipment that you have uh, to sell a body shop? But is there, is, there, is there any training help that Repairify is offering the industry? So we do train on our equipment, obviously. Uh, do virtual, we do in-person. Um, <clears throat> I think the biggest thing is, is in the calibration space, we do uh, also offer calibration training. Uh, coming in, going out, depending on what we're doing with, with you as a shop. Um, and, and it's not just machine-based. It's, it's deeply going into calibrations, right? And, and it's not always, hey, here's how we follow the procedure and this is what it looks like. It's uh, one of my coworkers always say, calibrations are easy until they're not, right? <clears throat> and then go back to one of those first scenarios we talk about where maybe the quarter panel was hit higher in front, but it, it the, the ripple effect or the collision en energy went through and it did affect that radar mounting area. Uh, being able to find or diagnose those types of things or knowing what to look for uh, based on the collision that happened and, and what happened to that vehicle, that's the bigger part of calibrations is that problem solving. And and that's the training that, that we, we do put forth and, and work with. You know, it's kind of like our, our remote technicians and, and our offerings in there. They, you know, go back to the the whole research portion of it. <clears throat> um, knowing what DTCs are in there, that's great, right? We need to know what the D D DTCs are in there to be able to start figuring out what's wrong with the vehicle. But coming from that collision industry, being a body tech myself, painter, owner, um, and going through, there's, there's a lot of stuff as a body tech that I, I didn't want to touch, right? I didn't have the deep knowledge of it. it. It was, okay, we'll scan the car, we'll hit the clear button. If it doesn't clear, what do we do next, right? And, and that's where offerings that we have and trainings that we do help with that to help you as a shop not have to have that person, but have access to a person that can help you through those situations. That's both on the diagnostic side and the calibration side. We have a dedicated group to calibrations that, hey, we start getting into those issues and, and we start problem solving. Uh, take a picture of what you've got going on. Maybe there's too much light coming in like this window behind me, right? Um, maybe your target set in the wrong spot. Maybe it's off an angle, you know, and, and maybe we have to start problem solving through where was it hit and, and those types of things. 
I think, Chris, there's a big emphasis out there today um, that as a body shop, you may not think you can do calibrations in-house, but you can. Uh, and I know where Parify has that message out there. Talk to me about the background of that philosophy that, you're, that you have and the tools that you're offering to, to, to allow a body shop the possibility of doing calibrations in-house. So it really starts with doing a site visit or, or looking at what you have. Um, like you said, you know, we, we've got a lot of places that maybe they were an old gas station, maybe they were an old dealership, uh, car wash, uh, warehouses, right? So you might have uh, roof support beams coming through and, and you don't have enough room there, or you've got some floor issues where the, where the floor sags or it's, you've got some angles on the floor cracking, um, that, that lighting that we're talking about. Once we come in and start working with that, we can start figuring out what, uh, what solution works for you. We, we don't have just one solution. We have many solutions. And, and sometimes it depends on your car mix. Um, Hondas, there's, there's, there's a few Hondas out there that require 30 feet out in front of the vehicle, right? So it's 30 feet plus the 12 to 15 feet of the vehicle that you need for straight out room so there's nothing in the way of that radar. Um, so space is a huge thing. But like you said, um, <clears throat> just because you don't think you have a spot you can do it doesn't mean you technically don't have that space. Uh, a lot of solutions and a lot of problem solving. We've, we've done a lot of these throughout the country. And when I say a lot, it's, it's in the multi hundreds, right? And, and work with a lot of shops to say, you know, maybe you can use this space here as a temporary space. You know, it, here's your main space. You've got, you, you can do 75% of what you need to do, but these ones that, that take a little bit more room out to the side or take a little bit more room out front, we can move it over here and you're going to tie up that area for a half hour to an hour. Um, so maybe move a body tech out or you're in front of your paint booth, right? I hate to shut down a paint shop, but, and, and maybe it's doing things after hours. Uh, we, we, we expand our hours to, to match our shops. Um, lots of solutions out there. And, and it's all based on business need, what you have uh, for one business is, is with cars or and for your space, right? It, there's there's so many things to look at. Um, and, and just because, you know, you have a dungeon or you, you've got a, a old rocky floor or something like that, it doesn't count you out. Uh, even sloped or pitched floors, uh, we have solutions for that, uh, that that work within the machines. Thanks, Chris. So, so last question, mm -hmm. Chris. I think yeah. that people understand, I think, and the industry understands that body shops get it tonight, today that they have to be doing calibrations. Whether they're doing it or, 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 or a dealer's doing it or, or they're bringing in a mobile service, it has to be done. Uh, a pre-scan and a post-scan has to be done. But I think the feeling out there is that these, if the body shop's doing these calibrations, most of them, they're not doing it right. How do we get body shops to do calibrations correctly? Really, it's it's either have someone on staff that is dedicated to that, right? That that, that could be your first line of defense. Uh, goes through a lot of the training, gets the ICAR certifications, goes to different classes, um, <clears throat> you know, becomes an expert and and knowing the tools, right? And, and the, the, that's probably the bigger part of ADOS is getting into it with the tools. Um, whether you want to go with all OE, if you want to go to aftermarket, there's coverage issues uh, when, when you go to aftermarket. But those, those different directions to go, you know, <clears throat> the, I, I think the other one uh, that I just missed and was going to glaze over was using a partner, right? Somebody that can come in, help you with that solution, help you with the problem solving, help you with setups, help you with, you know, <clears throat> staying up to date. Uh, in the last, last year, there's been, um, I mean, calibrations kind of stays the same as it goes through with targets. And now they're starting to add more cameras. So, you know, Subaru has a monocam target that they came out with uh, for another camera they have. So it's researching and making sure that's available, getting it to the customers that need it. Uh, Toyota added another uh, surround view target to their system. So keeping on top of it, you know, one, doing the calibrations is a huge portion of it and, and knowing, knowing how to problem solve and go through those calibrations to make them successful. And then it's staying up to date, keeping your tools up to date. I mean, that, that's probably one of the bigger things now is 
keeping your tools and your knowledge up to date as the cars are progressing. Great. Well, thank you, Chris, so much for being on the show today. Um, you know, this industry uh, cannot get enough information uh, on this subject matter at, at this point in time. So a any information we can provide them is helpful. So thank you again. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm Jason Stahl. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this episode of Under the Radar. For more episodes, visit BodyShopBusiness.com.